Uh, hello, everyone. As introduced, I am Professor Yi Gyeong Han of Social Studies Education at JNUE. I am the moderator for session two. We have four presentations for session two, and the topic of session two is global citizenship education in primary education. Uh, our speakers have 15 minutes each for the presentation. We do have a set time, so I would like to ask you to kindly keep to the time. Our first speaker, let me now introduce you to, uh, introduce you to our first speaker. Uh, he is the fourth and fifth Director General of APCU, uh, Mr. Utak Chung. So Mr. Chung is currently uh, lecturing at the Kyunghee University and also policy advisor at the Seoul City Education Office. So he has been active in various areas. Uh, the topic of his presentation today is global citizenship education in the primary education system in the Republic of Korea. So Mr. Chung, uh, you can start your presentation now. No. Good afternoon, Professor Lee. So I would first like to share my presentation. I have both Korean and English version. I will be presenting in Korean. And the material, uh, I will be using the English version. So let me just try to share the screen. My title is Global Citizenship Education. Uh, and as to this topic, as regards to the status of primary education in Korea, I believe that actually Professor Lee would be a better expert on this topic, but I would just like to share what I have prepared for you today. So uh, as mentioned by Professor Lee, I was the fourth and fifth uh, Director General of APCU. Currently, I lecture at Kyunghee University and also at the Seoul National University of Education and at Seoul National University as well. And uh, my main uh, areas of uh, teaching is global citizenship education. I'm currently policy advisor for global citizenship education to the Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education. Today, I would like to focus on the definition. What is global citizenship education? and then uh, the global citizenship education and primary education level in Korea. And then I will uh, conclude my presentation. So what is global citizenship education? So you may think of it as quite difficult or complex topic, but it is quite simple. We live in a global village today. And having a sense of belonging, that we are part of the same humanity. So that is one aspect. And another aspect is universal values. So in the past, we did not think too much of universal values. But these days, uh, we learn and teach and internalize universal values. So I think these are the largely two main uh, pillars of global citizenship education. Uh, so universal uh, values, would I, one example would be, of course, human rights, human dignity. Uh, the respect for uh, fellow human beings. And the second one, uh, what was just uh, discussed today, cultural diversity. Culture is different, language is different. Many things are diverse, but that does not mean that you should be discriminated. Uh, and then peace, and then environment and sustainable development. These would be the universal values taught in global citizenship education. At the UNESCO Paris head office, uh, there are some learning domains or learning capacities uh, defined for GCD. So we have the cognitive level. Uh, so this is about awareness and understanding knowledge-wise. And then we have the social emotional competency. And then lastly, we now know and we feel, so now we need to act. So that is the behavioral domain. 
So I tried to put all of these uh, themes together. So in education, I think we need an integrated approach rather than a fragmented approach. So we need to discuss and learn from each other. And I think it is also important to have you know, critical thinking as well. So I think these would be some of the main skills required in global citizenship education. And global citizenship uh, education can be reflected in all of these different topics. So in the international community, uh, there, this concept started to emerge in September 2012. He mentioned that it is time to foster global citizens. And the UN and the UNESCO started to actively promote and accept this concept. So I have on this slide uh, the after to discuss what happened after uh, the Secretary General Ban mentioned this at the UN. So within three years since it was first announced in 2012, it became a global agenda. So one year in 2013, um, the AFCU in Korea uh, held a technical consultation on GSET, and then the GSET became official vocabulary at the first UNESCO forum in 2013. And I became uh, officially a education agenda at the UNESCO World Education Forum. And then it was incorporated into the SDGs in UN. So it's a official global agenda. Uh, you know all of the SDGs. There are 17 goals. But if you look at the fourth one, quality education, and so it's the seventh uh, provision under the fourth uh, SDG, uh, and that is global citizenship education. So we call it 4.7, SDG 4.7. I believe that global citizenship education is related to you know everything, health uh, and um, other values. I think it is at the core of all the other SDGs. And all of the different countries until 2030 uh, need to reflect that in the national education policy, curriculum, teacher education, and also student assessment as well. And the governments uh, are actively encouraging these uh, as part of making progress in the SDGs. Uh, the second uh, part of my presentation is about G said in primary education level in Korea. So for the past six years, uh, I have worked at the APCIU, and so I would like to uh, share some of my experiences then. I also introduced some cases and efforts made by Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education and other regional education offices. And also share some of uh, my lectures that I made in Seoul National University of Education and some of the feedback that I received. So the Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding uh, is located in Seoul, and it has largely contributed to fostering lead teachers. So at the Regional Education Office, for example, for North Jeolla province, the provincial education office will select two from the primary schools and two from the secondary schools. Uh, so there is around 64 to 68 lead teachers uh, nationwide. And once they are selected, the Minister of Education will appoint them as lead teachers. Then they will lead, uh, they will receive lead teacher training. They will go back to their regions and lead the training for their peers and colleagues. And these teachers are selected every year. And so we have also established a research association so that they can continue to develop. And if you look at the statistics, currently there are 360 and around uh, 180 lead teachers in primary schools. And they have been able to go back 
uh, to their regions to foster around 1,700 provincial lead teachers. So there's around 3,800 uh, total. Uh, so I mentioned that this is a collection of both primary and secondary lead teachers. So at the primary school level, there may be around 1,700, around 2,000 lead teachers. If any of the teachers joining this conference are interested here, I would actively encourage them to apply and uh, become selected and receive the training. Another program is the International Teacher Exchange Program. As you can see, we have programs with Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mongolia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam sits for one semester and I believe that this is one of the most innovative global citizenship training programs it's not just sitting in a room it's going to a unfamiliar region living there for four to five months directly experiencing uh, local culture there has been about 1,000 teachers uh, that have benefited from the program so around 500 of them I think would be maybe around 250 uh, primary teachers have uh, taken part in this program. So also uh, keep this program in mind. And when the APCIEU uh, holds the program, I think this is one thing that you should uh, try to participate. Uh, the participating countries continue to increase. We have a teacher from Cambodia who is uh, presenting the case on global citizenship education, and I think that is a good ex example of the result of this program. And then we have SAN conference, uh, which is uh, the conference for all of the teachers who have uh, graduated from that exchange program. And this year we held it in virtual format. And offline, because uh, currently we are not able to have many offline programs, we developed online programs. And so primary school students are also very fluent in English. And if you feel like you want to reach out for more materials and more training, we have introductory courses and advanced courses in English, and you can apply for them. And uh, you can check out our website for the details. Uh, the presentation today will be shared with you, so please remember and go and look, uh, the web look for the website. It is all provided for free. So it has various topics. What is a global citizen education now? And what is uh, that we need to teach for global citizenship education and so on? And it's also a certification course as well. Uh, we have advanced courses as well, and we developed courses uh, associated with COVID-19. So again, check out the website here, and uh, you will be able to easily go and make your applications. Uh, there are some very short lectures, special lectures that are short, uh, but uh, very impactful. And I think these lectures can be used in your classrooms as well. We have animations too. Very, very short global citizenship education animations uh, that can be utilized in your classrooms. And you, you all can have access to these videos. Uh, we have also a collection of best practices, Bhutan, um, Senegal, Pakistan, Korea. And so what type of global citizenship education uh, cases are there in other countries? You can go and benchmark them. And at the Ban Ki-moon Center, uh, we develop programs in cooperation with them. We also develop programs with Sri Lanka as well. Uh, so uh, all of these websites, uh, you can reach out and um, explore. And then we have the UNESCO head office clearinghouse. If you go to their website, uh, the languages available are English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Russian, Chinese, and Korean. All of the materials are in Korean as well. So it's the UNESCO homepage for global citizenship education.
And if you go to the APCIU homepage as well, uh, there are also uh, a um, diverse array of uh, material available. Uh, we just heard about the Georgetown, uh, the cultural heritage program. We have uh, the CD-ROM program and full kit program that connects that with global citizenship. So you can see the history here. In 2030, we have uh, Began, 2014, Angkor Wat, all the way up to 2018, Jeju Islands, and 2019, Water Heritage. And you can use all of this material for your classes in the classrooms. We have board games, too, kids' games. So we have all of this material that can use for your cutting-edge uh, courses. We have guides for teachers, for primary, middle school, high school. We have workbooks for students. So there are abundant materials for global citizenship education. You cannot really say that you cannot teach this topic because you don't have the appropriate materials. That is how much uh, materials that we have been developing for this topic. And then once a year, we have teachers that gather, uh, that uh, teach global citizenship education and share their best practices. Uh, it's an international uh, platform. And this year, we held it in online format. At uh, the APCIU, we have Global Citizenship Campus. And so there are about 30 students in a class, and they do a mock-up of the UNESCO General Assembly, and they're able to experience UNESCO as well. Uh, it's closed now because of COVID-19, but when it reopens after the vaccines uh, stabilize the pandemic, uh, if you take some time to visit here, I am sure it will be extremely helpful. Uh, the GC needs to be also promoted in university campuses. So we have been continuing support uh, to the universities for this cause. And more recently, the focus has been on um, University of Education. And the Seoul National University of Education and Jinju National University of Education uh, have been very supportive of this program. And uh, global citizenship education uh, is also uh, a part of the basic liberal arts education requirement of Kyung University. And currently, 5,000 uh, freshman students every year need to take this course. And they decided to do this after one year of piloting uh, this course. The Seoul National University of Education have also recognized uh, the importance of global citizenship education. Uh, they felt that maybe the teachers have too much of a narrow view, uh, despite the glo growing importance of uh, internationalism and global community. And so they have adopted the global citizenship education. This is the syllabus that I'm sharing with you right now. And so they have human rights, uh, different topics uh, across 15 to 16 weeks. I'll go to the Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education. Global citizenship education designated schools uh, have been increased from 20 to 30. And by 2022, uh, they plan to increase uh, the, the schools up to 50, around 10,000 US dollars per school. Uh, so I would like to ask you to keep your time. The UNESCO school, schools uh, also receive about $1,000 per school. We have student cap teacher workshop. And currently, I am the policy advisor for global citizenship education. As you can see, the Seoul Education Office is uh, supporting uh, the different uh, schools here. And then in 2019, we had the Global Seoul Education Conference to foster global citizens. And in the past, we had multicultural centers. It was named Multicultural Education Centers. They have changed the name to Ta Plus On Center uh, to include global citizenship education in their programs. And the English Education Center here has changed the name to Multicultural Education, and now they're about to change the name to Global Citizenship Education. 
So there are efforts made by regional education officers as well. The Gyeonggi Province Office of Education developed their own textbook on global citizenship. Uh, Daegu Metropolitan Office of Education uh, changed the name of the Multicultural Center to Global Citizenship Education Center, and various efforts are being made by different regional governments. This is the textbook made by Gyeonggi Province. This is the Global Citizenship Education Center of Daegu Education Office. And in Incheon, uh, they have changed the name of the Multicultural Center to the Edu East Asian Global Citizenship Education Center. Uh, so for uh, the promotion of global citi citizenship education in the future, I think uh, it may be helpful to build a museum or a gallery on global citizenship education so that visitors can come and gain authentic, direct experience. So I would like, this is a image from 2018, the UN Group of Friends on GZ meeting. And, and uh, the presenter, Mr. Mezia, has also participated in this meeting. So this will end my presentation. Thank you for your presentation.